What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. I don't know why I hesitated there. It wasn't coming to mind. Uh, but in the last episode, we finished up the puzzle of the garden. We managed to escape, and now we're going to see what's going on with everybody else. Are we going to have another Ambidex game room coming up soon? I don't really know, but if the last game was any indicator, it's going to be a pretty tough one. I really don't know how I'm going to approach the whole situation with Alice. Although I, well, I'm actually totally leaning towards Betray, but we'll have to evaluate it when we actually get there. Anyways, no sooner had we stepped out of the garden than I saw the three people I'd watched leave through the green door sometime earlier. Oh, so we're immediately reuniting with another group. Whoa. What are you guys doing here? We ought to be asking you the same thing. How'd you get here? Sigma, Sigma, hand me the map. Map? Oh, right, yeah. The, Alice is like, I'll just show you. It's a lot easier than explaining with words. And I dug the map out of my pocket and spread it out in front of us. You three came in through the blue door, right? Yeah. And which room did you go into? This fan-shaped one. It's called the Bee Garden. Biotope. Interestingly, I'm, now that I'm taking a better look at the map, it looks like on the left side there's another fan-shaped room. I wonder what that room is. Anyways, Bee Garden? It's this big dome with a bunch of plants in it. Look, you can go see it yourself later, alright? What about you guys? Oh. Well, after we went through the green door, we ended up in the treatment center. A treatment center? Huh. And then we met up. Right here. So, what's the treatment center? It sounds a lot like the infirmary. Hopefully it's not! <laughs> You wanna have a look? We can go back to any of the rooms we've already visited. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we've got the time, we might as well. The real question is if we have the time. I'm shocked nobody's checking their wrists to see if... Well, how much time they have left before the Ambidex game, right? So? Sure, let's have a look. After a few moments of brisk walking, we found ourselves in the treatment center. I wonder why they have treatment center and the infirmary. Well, treatment center is probably more advanced. Ooh, got some like beds, nice little waiting area. Is that a painting of like a lion with like a laser beam coming out of its mouth, or what was that? What are those? <laughs> Then why this is called a treatment center? Those pods can cure a number of illnesses and even repair certain injuries. How? Be pretty helpful to have around. <laughs> Whoa, that's nuts. How about you climb in one of them, Dio? <laughs> why? <laughs> She's of course implying something is wrong with her. Well, maybe you can fix whatever's wrong with your brain. <laughs> hey! You wanna start something, lady? Calm down now, Dio. You don't cool off a bit and I'll have to throw you in one of these pods here. Huh? Why? Yeah, I'm not really sure what he means by that. Weren't you paying attention? They have a cold sleep function. Sorry, dog's acting up, but uh... I figured that ought to cool your head off. <laughs> That's actually really funny. But no, I, I, it slipped by me as well, this cold sleep function. I wasn't... it didn't stick out to me. Wait. Did you say cold sleep? That's where they freeze you, right? And you can stay that way for a really long time. Yeah. Oh, kind of like, kind of like Alice from 999, right? What's it called again? Cryo... Cryostasis, right? 
But anyways, Fai is telling us that according to some records we found in here, until about eight hours ago, there were three frozen people in these pods. Eight hours ago? That's incredibly recent, right? If we kind of backtrack a little bit, there were two hours between the first and second um, chromatic doors, right? Or really, two hours... Yeah, two hours from the Ambidex game to the second chromatic doors. We had all the time that elapsed while we were in the second chromatic doors. We had the time that elapsed 45 minutes of the Ambidex game. And then before that first Ambidex game, we had some time take place after the original chromatic doors. And then there was some time before the original chromatic doors. So eight hours is incredibly recent. Three people? Who? You mean three of us were... well, not necessarily, right? It could be the three of us. I'd be shocked if if people didn't remember waking up in such situations. But if they were anesthetized and, and thrown in here and then woke up, uh, or anesthetized while they were asleep in here, and so that they wouldn't remember thawing and waking up and such, I guess it's possible. It's also possible that these three people are just not any of the current players in the game. They were woken up prior to assist with setting it up or, you know, whatever it may be. We don't know. All we found was what was in the logs for the pods. How long were they here? No idea. Part of the logs were erased. All that's left is when the cold sleep function turned off. Great, so so all we know is that three people were here until about eight hours ago. It records them thawing out, getting up, and that's it. Then they could be anyone. Well, anyone but you. Huh? Why is that? What? Why not Alice? Because you don't need a device like this to freeze Alice. Is this like a joke about her being already like ice cold with her statements, her glares, or whatever it is? Am I wrong? Huh? What are you talking about? You don't need to play dumb. The water in your body isn't normal water. It's something called Ice-9. Oh. Wait, hold, hold on a second. This is pretty interesting. So Ice-9 is that stuff from 999 where it freezes more easily, I think, than regular water, or it has some other property. But Alice presumably was the all ice character from 999 who was you know frozen in cryostasis for a very long time the real question is how does Tenmyoji know this right how would Tenmyoji know that information it's not like there's been any opportunity to analyze the water literally inside her body right or is there some other property related to the water that he's observing I don't know ice nine it freezes at 96.8 degrees. And then how is he so familiar with it, right? I thought that was more of an odd thing, right? Ice 9. But maybe maybe it's more well-known than I'm giving it credit. That means all you have to do to put yourself in cold sleep is drop your body temperature below 96.8. No fancy machine needed. Where on earth did you hear that? From Clover. Clover? When we were exploring the lounge during the first round. Clover said that. Well, I mean, Clover obviously went through the, the 999 game and would know Alice from that situation. And we know that Alice and Clover do have some sort of a history since that first game, just based on their interactions earlier on in this game. But I would be surprised if Clover would share something like that, right? Because if that's the case, that identifies Alice as a very key figure. The Alice, the All Ice Alice, right? The rumored Egyptian queen or whatever. <laughs> um, and would put a lot of 
you know, spotlights on her, bring a lot of attention, probably unwanted attention to her. And if they're friends, if they have that sort of relationship, I don't think that's information that Clover would just kind of pass out freely. I see. Well, things obviously just got a little bit tense. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh man, you fell for that one hook, line, and sinker, didn't you? Oh, so she's just gonna play it off like a joke. Clover was messing with you. That is, if she even said anything to you at all. It was a lie. A joke. A joke? It's joke! <laughs> no, there's no way it was a joke. I'm sure about it. Your body is made of Ice-9. He's... so why is he doubling down on it? If it's really only just hearsay from Clover, how can he be so adamant about him being right in this regard? Well, you're mistaken. It's a ridiculous misunderstanding, an urban legend. With seemingly no other prompting, Alice launched into a lengthy explanation. It went something like this. Ooh, I love this music. At some point in the past, someone found a frozen, mummified Egyptian queen. What was curious about this mummy, however, was that it remained frozen at room temperature. People began to refer to her as All Ice, which eventually simply became Alice. Rumors that her body was made of Ice-9 began to circulate, and her bizarre refusal to thaw only compounded them. They say that the mummy finally thawed, and when it did, it began to move. And ever since then, I've had people say they thought I was her. I mean, I feel like this could be very clarified by asking Alice, okay, what were you doing while the actual all ice was frozen, right? Supposedly, there's some time in history where Alice thawed. If this Alice can say, you know, I was growing up in this place on Earth with the, with this family, and, or I had this job and was doing this thing, this could very easily be cleared up. I guess maybe, maybe even if Alice were to attempt to do that, I would have to be a little bit skeptical about some degree of brainwashing or implanting false memories or, or something like that. But if this were Alice who did thaw, it, it would be pretty exceptional for her to be this adapted to modern society, right? Unless it's been some number of years since the original 999, when she did potentially thaw. She could obviously not have thawed um, and be a different Alice, unlikely in my opinion, but it's possible. She could have false memories or not have any memories of thawing or anything prior to thawing and thus not think she's that Alice, or she could know that she's that Alice and be adamantly denying it for some other reason. Uh, at this moment, we don't really have the ability to clarify, I don't think. But anyways. I mean, really, how could anyone believe something so ridiculous? The existence of this mysterious Alice and of this ice that doesn't melt are just urban legends. But why would people make that mistake about you in particular? It can't just be because your name is Alice. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Why would this particular Alice get, you know, so much attention or confusion about being THE Alice? There are tons of Alices. Also, uh, every single time Dio speaks, it's just like, it's music to my ears. I love his voice actor. <laughs> Is it because of your face and how you look? I mean, she certainly has that sort of Egyptian look. Well, it is true that I am both beautiful and elegant. <laughs> I mean, it's not the, the beauty or the elegance of a queen, it's the fact that you look like the stereotypical Egyptian queen in terms of decor and accessories and all that. Can I really be blamed if people think I'm an Egyptian queen? But also look at that pose as she's like, well, I am beautiful. <laughs> 
I don't think that's the only reason, though. Someone who made that mistake said something to me once. They claimed they'd seen me before. Of course, I immediately pressed the issue. Do you mean the mummy Alice? I said. When? Where? Of course, they were at a loss. Well, wasn't... Wasn't the mummy hidden away? Like, bought by a private collector some hundred years ago or something like that? I'm trying to remember the story from 999, but I don't remember it too well. Luckily, it, se it seems like in the archives we can actually refresh up on a couple things from the 999 game. In fact, I began to feel a little sorry for them. So I told them something. If you're so convinced, then maybe I am actually Alice. But maybe I've lost my memory and can't remember who I am, and so on and so on. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we were talking about earlier. That's a very real possibility. I'm still not sure why Clover would tell you something like that, though. Even if she was just messing with you, it seems a little out of left field. You really think she put that much thought into it? She was probably just screwing with him, and it was the first thing that came to mind. Maybe she wanted to see if she could get him to believe something completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I can see her doing something like that. I don't know if Temyoji's buying it. Well, I think that's enough idle gossip for now. The cold sleep business is interesting, but I don't think it's terribly useful. We should go see if the other team has returned to the warehouse yet. At Alice's request, we made our way out of the treatment center. Okay. Now we're back at a different warehouse. Huh. So, also, what's immediately standing out is the text on the wall is different, right? Memento Mori, if the ninth lion ate the sun. So it seems like lions are going to be a, a theme here, right? Or a motif. We found a lion mosaic in the garden. We saw a lion painting in the treatment center. And now we're seeing this text involving lions. Is it another anagram? I'm not entirely sure, but... I'm, I'm, well, well, we'll have time to think about it later. This is... It looks like another warehouse. It looks like the same warehouse. Hey, look, are those white chromatic doors? So white's the overlap of red, green, and blue, right? So how are we going to do that? <laughs> right, because you would need three different colors to get there. So we would need, maybe, well, actually, I mean, I don't know. They change the colors and stuff after each Ambidex game anyways. So maybe in the next one, the pairs will be broken up into singles, and we'll need three singles of different colors to go through the white doors. Maybe. I'm, well, we'll see eventually. <laughs> three more doors. They're all glowing white. You think... These might be the next set of chromatic doors. I bet on it. Look. They've got the same boxes next to them as the other doors. So the next set of doors are white? They haven't all been the same color before. We definitely need to tell the others about this. Right. 
Let's head back to floor A. Yeah, I mean, it's good to know where these chromatic doors are, so that when the timer, which we still haven't checked, eventually runs low, we'll know where we need to go to open them. Also, it's kind of an intricate hallway. Why did we stop there to show that there was a lever? I feel like that couldn't be completely inconsequential, right? In all the other areas, we've just kind of like zoomed along <laughs> um, through the map. But anyways, let's see what's going on with the other team. Are they done yet? What was their experience like? Still really perplexed by Clover and Alice's dynamic. If Clover felt comfortable sharing that information about Alice, but Alice is clearly not comfortable sharing that information with other people. If Alice and Clover are supposed to be close, I wouldn't expect Clover to do something or reveal something so personal about Alice that she's clearly not comfortable sharing. Uh, oh, thank goodness. Yeah, don't worry, we're all right. You finally returned. I was beginning to get anxious. Did something happen? Eh? Yes. Uh, uh oh. It's Quark, you see. He. Oh no. What? What happened to Quark? He collapsed. It happened so suddenly, we were just searching our room. What? Please, you must hurry to the infirmary. Clover is looking after him, but his condition could change at any moment. You should go. Oh no! Oh, poor Tamyoji, but what's going on with Quark? He collapsed. Interesting. I mean, for what it's worth, at least there are two people there. Unless they're colluding, we can say one person was unlikely to have attacked Quark or something like that given that the other person could easily tell everybody else. Unless they split up within whatever room they explored, but I don't know. Tenmyoji shoved Kei aside and leapt through the yellow door. The rest of us exchanged a few startled looks, then ran off after him. Quark! Come on, kid! Get a hold of yourself! So weird to see him without his hat on. Temyoji grabbed Quark's shoulders and began to shake him desperately. It was Clover who stopped him. Hey, what are you doing? He's sick and we don't even know what's wrong with him. What if you make him worse? Very good point. Then what am I supposed to do? I have to save him. Save? That seems a little extreme. Maybe he just has anemia or something. No, that's not it. I know him better than any of you. Although we still don't really know that relationship, right? He doesn't have anemia. He's never just collapsed before. Well, then call an ambulance and stop freaking out about it. Baka, this is serious. The infirmary seems pretty well equipped. Yeah, I'm trying to think what what could have led to his collapse, right? There are plenty of diagnostic tools, but without a doctor, there's not going to be much we can do with them. Well, uh. <coughs> I do graduate from medical school in a week, so I'll do my best, guys, I promise. <laughs> oh, right. Well, we've got Luna. Luna, that's right, she has some degree of medical training, although we haven't really clarified exactly what that is. That's right, I remember Dio saying something. You have a medical license, don't you? Wait, really? Is that true, Luna? Um, well, yes, but... You have to look at him, then. Please, Quark needs your help. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, 
And I think that machine over there is a medical scanner. It's called an atom. It uses nuclear magnetic resonance imaging to examine and diagnose people. So that thing can tell us what's wrong with Quark? This is maybe an overly simplified or more powerful than we have currently, but this would be a very convenient machine. Yes, I believe it can. I don't want to rush you, but the sooner the better. Just let us know if you need anything. Of course. Luna's scanning away. <laughs> the whole process took only a few minutes. The machine scanned Quark's body, and within seconds his results lit up the screen. Words too complicated for me to understand scrolled across it, and as she read them Luna's face grew dark. She bit her lip and just stood there for a moment, looking down at Quark, before she spoke. Well, I... I know what's wrong with him. I feel so terrible saying this, but Quark is... oh my, what... what's so grave? Quark has an infection. A viral infection. I'm shocked that the imaging would give that, but um... Also, I... I'd be surprised to... have such a grave response to a viral infection. Oh no. Don't tell me... Yes. He's been infected with a virus called Radical 6. Oh, that's right. That's like the... That's the virus of what's going on outside right now, right? They talk about how it, there's like a pandemic, right? Have you heard of this virus? Radical 6, I mean. Uh. Yeah. It was like briefly mentioned earlier. I forget exactly where. Maybe it was, maybe it was actually in the infirmary. I told Alice and Temyoji about it. Fine, I heard about it from Luna. Dio and Luna were two of the first people to investigate the infirmary. They must have seen the newspaper clipping that Quark found. I'd stayed behind after the AB game, and they'd all split up and gone into different rooms. It seemed like, one way or another, everyone had heard about Radical Six. So, so no. He can't. How could he have gotten infected? That's not possible. That's actually a really good point, right? If he's been in this warehouse for the past, maybe eight hours, it's unlikely he got the infection here. And if he didn't get the infection here and has been infected prior to being brought here, that means there's some sort of incubation period, right? Where he was completely asymptomatic with the virus, but now is obviously um, experiencing some significant uh, hardships as a result. And it really means that anybody else here could be infected too. I don't really know, I don't think they talked about how the virus is transmitted, but they all better start putting on some PPE because they don't want to get what Quark has right now, or obviously has had. Who's been with Quark, right? It was, was it Tenyoji, Clover, and Kay, obviously, just recently, but I'm trying to remember from the very first group. Was it Luna and Tenyoji, I think? I think so. And if so, or no, no, it was Dio. Dio was with Quark, right? Yeah, I don't remember who they were with, though. I think it was Luna. I think it was Leo. Leo. <laughs> Luna. Luna. Why do I keep mixing up Dio and Luna? <laughs> Luna, Dio, and Quark were the first group with Quark, and then the second group was Quark, Clover, and K. So those people that have been with Quark should really be on high alert for any symptoms of this Radical Six. Something about the tone of his voice seemed strange. Why wasn't it possible? Had Tenmyoji known about Radical Six before the rest of us? Interesting, so they seem to be, or at least Sigma seems to be giving more weight to this impossibility of Quark getting infected. Do they know enough about the virus that they know he couldn't have been or shouldn't have been able to have contracted it? Is it something with Quark or is it something with the virus and just the environment he's been in for the past, I don't know, eight hours or even before being brought here? I don't know. 
I'm not sure if we'll get any answers soon. There must be something we can do. How can we cure him? Well, Adam says there's an antiviral serum called Axelavir or Excelavir. It's the only way to counteract Radical Six. If we can inject him with some, he should... He should be okay. Where is it? Shouldn't it be in the infirmary somewhere? We looked around, but we didn't see anything. I don't trust the darn thing you said. <laughs> I'm asking Luna. I'm sorry, but... Dio's telling the truth. We didn't find anything. Darn it. What about the other rooms? Sigma, what about you? Did you find anything? No, nothing like medicine. I mean, it was just, like, a park. Lots of vegetation and stuff, but there was that one little tomb type thing with the key. Maybe it's in there? Unlikely, but no medicine. What about you, K? Was there any medicine in your room? We visited the laboratory. There were a number of chemicals and concoctions there, some of which were medicine, but nothing like what we're searching for, I'm afraid. Oh god. Then he's... he's going to... Oh god, no. Look, just to be sure, the three of you went to the treatment center, right? And you're sure it wasn't there? No, there was nothing even remotely like it. You went there too, didn't you? The only thing in the treatment center are those treatment pods. Would they be able to treat something like this? They seem to be rather capable. Treatment? Pods? That's it! If we put Quark in one of those pods... For a moment, there was silence. Quark? Quark? Oh, what? He's just... up again? Quark! Oh, thank God! You're awake! Get away from me! What? Wait, ho what? Quark, what are you... Huh? Sorry, Grandpa. I can't. I have to... Have to what? Why is he all this... Huh? What are you talking about? Isn't it obvious? I have to escape. But how? Like this. Quark's hand moved like lightning. He'd grabbed hold of the scalpel and was driving it straight towards his heart. Wait, what? That... Quark, no! What is going on? Stop! No, let go, let go of me! Pretty tough for a kid. Hey, guys, I could use a hand here. Yeah. Right. On it. Me too. Yeah, get all, all hands on deck to restrain him if he's trying to kill himself. But what changed so drastically, right? Stop it! Let go of me, you jerks! Temuji! What the heck are you doing? Get over here! Is that sort of downtrodden look, is he aware of something that would... I guess explain this behavior? And just saddened by it? Is he contemplating whether or not to share that information with the rest of the crew? Temyoji! Can you even hear me? Oh. Right. Darn you! Bakas! Why won't you let me go? 
I have to get out of this body. They can't lock away the soul. Once my body's gone, my soul can escape. Uh, I don't know if I really think that's the most beneficial reasoning for you to stick with at the moment, Quark. Please! You have to let me go! Let me go! I'm trapped here! Let me die! I have to die! Kill me! Somebody! Anybody! Yikes! Jeez, this kid's lost it! Yeah, no kidding! Hey! Somebody get that scalpel away from him! Yeah, that's not a good, not a good thing to have around anymore. Good. Thanks, whoever that was. Whoa, 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 whoa! I know from 999. I know Zero Escape. You can't do this to me. You can't just say thanks, whoever that was, to somebody taking a scalpel away in this precarious situation. Somebody is now armed with a scalpel, and we have no idea who it is. No, 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 Zero Escape. You can't just do that to me. You can't just say, somebody took away the scalpel, but we don't know who it is. Now somebody has a scalpel. Potentially, they just took it away and set it aside on a table because they want Quark to not have it. But we have no idea who it was and whether or not they just, you know, pocketed it for themselves to use in the future. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't do that to me, Zero Escape. Quark barely even seemed to notice the loss of the scalpel. He continued to scream and writhe like he was possessed. What are we going to do? We've got to calm him down somehow. Luna. Luna. Yes? Are there any tranquilizers in here? N no, really? Well, I mean... What? There's Soparil Beta. That's, um... Oh, that's the anesthetic they used... To, to bring them here, right? Soparil? That's the anesthetic. The one that's in our bracelet. Good, perfect. Hit him with some of that. What? He'll be fine. It's just an anesthetic, Temyoji. It won't hurt him, I promise. But... Just hurry up and do it. Come on, Luna. Okay, I mean, really, Luna, you should be the one making the medical decisions here, right? Evaluating whether or not it's safe to give a kid who just collapsed an anesthetic in this situation. Or if it's, even if not completely safe, less risky than keeping him awake right now in his current state. But regardless, let me just... Why did that sound like a gun? Why did that sound like a gun? Okay, I've got it. Good. Wait until he's... Now, do it now. Right. No, stop. Stop. And slowly the intense music subsides. And calm rushes over the crew of, I don't know, Virtue's Last Reward. Except for Sigma, who now realizes somebody has a scalpel and he has no idea who it is. <laughs> I'm freaking out about it. Respiration, blood pressure, brain waves, everything's normal. According to these readings, he's in a very deep sleep. Alright, I guess we're good for now. Yes. What about the anesthetic? How long will it last? You shouldn't wake up for a few hours. Alright, well, just a decent amount of time. Man, he sure was strong for such a little guy. However, the question is... Is a few hours too long to participate in the Ambidex game, right? And if so, that adds a whole new dimension to this crisis, right? They don't know, to my knowledge, they haven't checked how long they have until the Ambidex game starts, and 
If somebody intentionally wanted Quark to not participate, especially given his track record now of strongly advocating for choosing ally, at least outwardly saying so, he could very well be sabotaged so as not to have that, um, not to have to contend with that during the Ambidex game. And maybe somebody could have infected him with Radical Six intentionally, should they have found it or, or something like that? Hmm, I don't know. I don't think that seems incredibly likely, admittedly, but it's a possibility. Oh, Dio was commenting on how strong Quark was, and Luna's saying, I think that might be the virus's fault. It probably attacks the part of the brain that governs reason. Without anything to hold it back, his body was using every ounce of strength it had. Yeah? How do you know? Huh? Oh, well, um... How much do you know about this Radical Six? I think something... <laughs> this is a total non sequitur. But I, when I'm standing, just in general, and I'm like breathing, I don't really move that much, right? Like my chest expands like a little bit, but I feel like in visual novels that have some degree of motion, for the sake of having motion that's, you know, noticeable or, or you know, breaks up some of the still aspects of visual novels, I feel like they really exaggerate those resting idle animations. Like every breath is like a, like a really big movement, and I feel like it's really exaggerated with Luna. And honestly, looking at Dio as well, it's, it's fairly big, but... It's, I mean, it's not distracting or bad by any means. It's just visual novels in general. I feel like they do that whenever they do have uh, some degree of motion of the sprites on screen. So, so not oh, not much. I probably know about as much as you do. All I've seen about it is that newspaper article. <laughs> that the truth? Why would I lie about that? I've seen other viruses do the same thing. I was just making a guess. So, when Quark tried to kill himself, are you saying that was because of Radical 6 too? I mean, yeah, his, his logic circuits definitely seemed fried. <laughs> Yes. At least, I think so. So what kind of virus is Radical Six? A lot of silence around here. Uh, what are you doing? I turned and followed Temyoji's gaze. Oh my god! <laughs> There stood Alice, her hand wrapped tightly around the scalpel. Of course it's Alice. Of course it's Alice. Oh my goodness. I, I'm, you know, I'm shocked that we got the answer to who took the scalpel as quickly as we did. I was sure it was going to be like a, some hours down the road, you know, somebody's going to happen to have had a scalpel that traced back to this event. But of course it's Alice who now is using the scalpel. And look at the look on her face, right? She looks like she is not messing around right now. Of course. Apparently, she had been the one to take it away from Quark. The longer I looked at her, however, the more I wondered if she'd taken it to protect him, or for some other, more sinister reason. She didn't seem stable. In fact, she looked far more like Quark had a moment ago than I was entirely comfortable with. Her eyes were flat and hollow. Her face was an emotionless mask. She was not well. Alice? Hey, are you feeling okay? Wanna drop that scalpel real quick for us? <laughs> We're all going to die. Huh? We're all dead already. Only terrorists would resort to biological warfare, but they will soon. Hey, what the heck are you talking about? You don't understand? No, I, I mean, I guess not. All of humanity is going to die. The virus will spread. Alice, you gotta keep it down. Those are These are sensitive things to say in the current world state. Adults, children, 
Everyone. Everyone. There won't be anyone left. I... I'd rather die here. Wait. Alice. What? Wait, so she's... She's running. We were all too stunned to even try to restrain her. We just stood there as she spun around and leapt through the door. What's gotten into Alice? Darn it. I shook myself and took off after her. I'm, uh, I guess I'm surprised it didn't turn into a situation where she tried to hold everybody else hostage. But those few moments of hesitation had put too much distance and too many doors between us. Darn. Which way did she go? Right? Left? Am I gonna have to decide here? I was still trying to decide when everyone else poured out of the infirmary. You lost her? Yeah. I don't know which way she went. Well, let's split up and look. Quickly. She can't have gotten too far. Right. Look, if you find her, it's probably best not to shout or anything. Yeah, she doesn't seem very stable and has a weapon. Just do your best not to provoke her. Understood? Gotcha. Tenmyoji, I think you should stay here with Quark. The rest of us can look for Alice. Sound good? Yeah, I guess it makes sense to have Tenmyoji look over Quark, but I also can't help but think, just in terms of how these games typically go, that it's a little bit, I guess, suboptimal to leave Tenmyoji completely alone with Quark, who is unconscious. We trust the relationship more or less, but we don't know what Tenmyoji's gonna be doing when nobody's watching, right? I stay here. Got it. Alright, let's move, people. Get going. At Fi's command, we scattered, filtering off into the different doors. As I ran, I thought, where should I look for Alice? Perhaps the lounge would be a good bet. Okay. The lounge. I don't see her, but it, the way they're panning through the room makes me think we're gonna get trapped in here or something. No one here, huh? Darn. Where did she go? Complaining wasn't going to help anything. I needed to go look somewhere else. Oh, so we didn't get locked in. That's nice. I mean, I know they said that if we've cleared a room, right? If we've cleared a chromatic door, we can go back, but... I'm surprised that there wasn't like a surprise, you're locked in here now, everybody's locked in a separate room now. That's another thing. I was under the impression we would be splitting up as a group and walking, you know, going through the different building, uh, the different rooms with one or two other people at a time. Not everybody split up individually. Because if so, well, everybody split up individually removes everybody's alibis. So many things can be done when, again, nobody's watching. So now we're going to the treatment center. Okay. Anything of interest here? Jellyfish. <laughs> I don't I didn't realize that before. I still don't see her. Shoot. Nothing in the treatment center either. We need to find her quick or she's going to do something bad. If we hadn't stopped Quark. Yeah, no kidding. He would have killed himself. And it seems Alice is, I guess at least mentality is following a similar path. I need to hurry. Yeah, where is she? I headed to the garden next. Alright, looking around the garden. I don't see her. I don't see her yet. Where could she be? I'd only gone a few steps from the walkway through the grass when I stopped short. Uh-oh. What happened? 
What? Alice. Alice is just there limp with with Phi. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry, my dog needs my attention again. Poorly timed <laughs> interruption. But yeah, so Alice is not doing so hot. Oh, there you are. Good. I'm glad you showed up. Huh? I just got here a minute ago. Hmm, so this is this is part of what's tough about everybody splitting up. We don't know how long Fi has been here. Is she telling the truth and that she's really only been here for a minute? Or did she get here significantly earlier? Did she find Alice, potentially have an altercation, and lead to Alice being in this current state? She was like this when I found her, and again, we don't know that. When you showed up, I was getting ready to carry her to the infirmary. It's like she's reporting her alibi. <laughs> this reminds me of Among Us. Then she's, uh, alive? Yeah, oh, okay, so that's a pleasant surprise. I mean, as much as I dislike Alice, I don't want her dead. Her breathing and pulse seem normal. She doesn't appear to have any obvious external wounds. That's another important thing. She's in this state, but she doesn't have any obvious external wounds, despite holding a scalpel, right? We would expect maybe her to have been attacked or something like that, but it is worth considering that Quark also just collapsed during that one room. He arguably wasn't acting as strangely as Alice has been um, prior to his collapse and instead only thought that way and acted that way after he woke up after his collapse. Um, but I guess it seems to be following a similar course to Quark's experience with Radical Six, right? So she's just unconscious? Looks like it. What about the scalpel? Doesn't look like she has it. Oh no! <laughs> Another game of who has the scalpel? <laughs> Fi, did you take it? I figure she probably dropped it on the way here. So Fi is claiming she doesn't have it. Obviously Alice doesn't have it. And, well, maybe. Not obviously, but... If I couldn't find it on Alice, and she thinks she dropped it somewhere, so somebody else at large could potentially have the scalpel, because everybody's running around, we don't know where anybody else is. Hmm. Anyway, we need to get her to the infirmary. The only thing I can think of is if we can maybe track Alice's path from the infirmary to the garden, we could then cross-reference that with who traveled in which directions to try to find Alice. Give me a hand here. Right. Alright, so I mean, we'll take her to the treatment center and see what's wrong, potentially, but... Alice was lighter than I'd expected, and Fi and I managed to set off toward the infirmary at a brisk trot. Oh, no, the infirmary. Lay her down next to Quark or whatever. Maybe you use that scanner, right? But it seems like she also has the virus. Alright, please pay attention, everyone. You need to hear this. The Adam has finished scanning Alice, and we're going to find out the results in the next episode. I am actually really eager to find out the results myself, but unfortunately I can't really record much more, and I get the impression that when we do find these results, we're going to launch into a whole nother debacle. So I'm going to have to hold off here. This was a pretty exciting episode. A lot happened with regards to Quark and now Alice as well. The scalpel that's at large. This is going to be a very important sequence of events, I think, going forward. Um, there's a lot of chaos that happened. There's We learned a little bit about Luna. We learned a lot about some tools that we have at our disposal to diagnose what's wrong with certain people too that could come into play later on. So yeah, this was, this was an important one and I definitely enjoyed it and am looking forward to seeing what the consequences of everything going on right now are going to be in the future. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it too. But until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.